Thank you. I'd like to thank the chairs, co-chairs, ranking members, and the entire Finance, Revenue, and Bonding Committee. Uh, I'd like to start by saying that I'm in opposition to HB 5025, and that's the uh, excise tax on ammunition. I sat here and I just listened to uh, the previous speaker, and I disagree with almost everything she said. Um, this is definitely targeting firearms owners. You know, I, I don't know of any other tax that targets a, a certain group of people, especially at 35 percent. Uh, to be quite frank, it, it doesn't make sense to me. You know, people use guns to protect themselves. In my district, I have 13 towns. I'm the 35th district. And in some areas in my town, when you call the police, it can take up to 20 minutes for an officer to get there. <clears throat> These people have firearms to protect themselves. Because I don't know about you, but if somebody's breaking into your house and you, you expect an officer 20 minutes from then, I hope you want something to protect you. So we're going to charge them 35% for the ammo to protect themselves. Just, it blows my mind. I don't even know what to say about that. I heard the speaker before us talk about the fact that, you know, people are going to say it's going to take away from businesses in town or in the state of Connecticut. They're absolutely right. Look at the alcohol tax. Look at all of the, the uh, package stores just north of us where they don't have a tax. They're doing quite well because people go over the line. If this tax goes into effect, I'm going to buy my ammunition out of, out of the state of Connecticut. I'm going to tell you right now that's, that's going to happen. Why? Because I, I, I go out of state on trips. 35% is ridiculous, when, especially when you put it on with the, the current tax and then the 11% on the wholesale tax. You're punishing those that, that have not done anything wrong. You're blaming the gun for the violence and not the people. And what I heard the, the previous speaker say is that, um, you know, the guns can be stolen, so the victim of that stolen property should be blamed for it and should be paying a higher tax for it. That's what I heard. This, if you look at the plastic bag tax, you know, we thought we were going to get revenue out of that. We don't. People don't want to pay it. So I don't know about you, I, every time I go to the store, I see people driving the carriage out of the store and it's full of groceries. Taxes make a difference. And I think we're going to lose money if we raise this to 35%. Or if we raise it to 25% or we raise it to 20%. That was a quick five minutes. Three minutes. So I, I'm going to I'm going to end by uh, basically saying I am against this tax. We we shouldn't re-victimize those that had their weapons stolen. Obviously, uh, we can't control that. I also want to say I'm I'm also in support of HB number five zero two five and HB number five zero five nine. I'll take any questions for anybody. Thank you, Senator Champagne. Just two quick clarifications, not in direct response to your testimony, but mm -hmm. a cigarette tax is certainly a tax that I think uh, cigarette smokers probably feel like gun owners at this point in this conversation because yep. that is a, a significant uh, tax. And in, in regards to the plastic bag tax, you know, that necessarily wasn't an attempt to just raise revenue. It was an attempt to change behavior, which tax policy often is used to do. And it's actually resulted in exactly what we wanted, which was less plastic bags floating out there in the environment, clogging up our waterways. So I just wanted to offer that for edification well, purposes. We didn't have to tax it. We could have just outlawed it in one swoop. Uh, Representative Davis, followed by Representative Piscopo. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Um, I know you concentrated most of your oral testimony here on, on the first bill, but uh, the two bills you did mention are important ones, too. I didn't know if you had anything in particular you wanted to say why you support those two bills. Thank you. Well, the long term, the uh, personal income tax credit for long term care, you know, we have out of control premiums right now. And, and in fact, people are going in and get double taxed. Uh, you know, they, they ask for one increase on the, the premium. And then three months later, they're asking for another increase on top of that increase. So I think this is a start to help solving that issue, mainly because, uh, you know, if we can write the, the, the tax off, it'll help those people that have those policies. And number two, uh, the tax credit for businesses that employ individuals with intellectual or developmental disabilities. 
it's important that we, we somehow uh, make up the difference because I believe when we did the $15 an hour, we, we, you know, we played around with something there. So I think given the, uh, uh, the, um, uh, the, the tax credit for businesses to hire those with, with I, um, IDD would sure help the employment process. I represent Piscopo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and just to follow up on, on our chairman's uh, comments that some taxes are put in as a deterrent, I, mm -hmm. I would, uh, without questioning anybody's motivation here, you know, the, the proponent's motivation, uh, could that be a deterrent to try and uh, erode the Second Amendment or, or, or law abiding people's rights to obtain that's ammunition how I, and that's, firearms? That's how I look at it, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Th and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any additional questions for Senator Champagne? Seeing none, thank you very much. Well, I got off the hook. 